Hello friends, welcome to my channel Sushal Chess Files. Today we are at the next topic, the mating attacks explained. We are at the 11th position of our topic. This is the position with white to play and win of course. We see that white is having a great activity. His pieces are high near the black king. I have discussed before also that we see how many attackers are there near the king and we see how many defenders are there. Something which Mikhail Tal has said as the assault ratio. Number of attackers is to number of defenders. Whenever the attackers exceed 2, we can say that the combination possibilities are almost assured. And here in this case we see that white has 3 extra attackers. Why 3? Bishop and knight are running the f7 square. Rook is indirectly attacking, putting pressure on f7. There is a lot of pressure on f6 with rook and bishop. And the white queen attacks the important h7 square. Although we can say here the pieces are not concentrating their attack on one particular point, which usually we call or we use the term focal point where the pieces attack the most. But there are some different kind of weaknesses. One we see the diagonal a2 g8 where the f7 pawn is pinned and we see the queen's intensity of attack on the h7 square and the rook and queen's ability to attack on the h5. Let's get down to the position and look at the candidate moves and try to solve the position. Obvious candidate moves which come to mind is nf7. After nf7, rook f7, the rook gets pinned. Bishop f7 check, king f7 and queen h5 check. That looks like an interesting possibility but the king can just go to g8. Another similar possibility is nf7, rook f7, bf7, king f7. And after bf6, bf6, queen h7 is possible. And white is trying to put pressure on the f6 square. He threatens rook f6, queen f6, rook f1. But black has a decent move there. He can go with the move nd4, stopping the threat. Now rook f6, queen f6, rook f1 allows knight e2 check. When we see that the white rook will be taken by the queen and white will get better. Attacking possibilities are many. But white has to play very carefully. Another candidate which comes to mind is bf6, bf6, when the rook can be transferred to the h5 square. When we see we can put pressure on h7, force black to play h6, and then look for the move rook h6, gh, queen h6, which also gives decent possibility, but black has the move bg7, keeping the g5 closed over there. So these all possibilities are very interesting and they look good but it's hard to believe that white has got a forced mate here especially if we are not aware about the assault ratio. White to play and white goes for a series of forced moves here. White goes for the move bf6 in the game. He is ready to give up the bishop for the knight because knight is the defender of the h7 and the h5 squares bf6, bf6, he goes for the move qh7 check, which we were looking at first also. After qh7, we see that kh7 is forced and now white uses the move rook h5 check, king has to go to g8 and now it looks like the attack is heading towards the dead end, but white has the strong move knight g6, when we see that the dangerous spin by the b3 bishop enables white to win the game. At the most black can do bd4 check and after the move king h1 we see it's a no check position and there is no defense to the mate on h8. Let's play the moves and see b into f6, b into f6. Here the interesting possibility nf7, rook f7, bf7, kf7, queen h7, idea rook f6 can be stopped by nd4. When rook f6, queen f6, rook f1 allows any to check and the rook would be lost next. White went for the spectacular qh7 check which black was not at all anticipating. And after qh7, kh7, rook h5 check, kg8 and black must have realized by now what white was aiming for. And we see that now there is no defense. Even the move qd4, qd4 check. Rook d4, bd4, 
King H1 and whatever is played, X2 will be Rook H8 checkmate. The white player could finish the game pretty quickly in an unexpected way. I hope you are enjoying these lessons. Do like, share and subscribe the channel. Thanks for your time.